This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Coma Ward. Coma Ward is a game that is in Kickstarter right now from Everything Epic Games. And this is going to be an interesting game for me to review for you. Uh, I'm going to be able to show you the mechanisms of the game, but this game kind of relies on secrecy and hidden information uh, to keep the game really, really exciting, really fun. This game is a mystery. It is a situation where each of the players is uh, a person that has just woken up from a coma in an abandoned hospital. The only other people you are in the hospital are the other players who are also coma patients that woke up. They have no idea who they are, uh, they have no idea why they're there, and they have no idea why there's like literally nobody else in the hospital. It's completely abandoned. Um, you're going to have to creep around the, the, the hospital, uh, finding different rooms uh most likely having hallucinations because of the fact that like you you've been doped up and you've just you know you're you're crazy in some weird way just because you're totally disoriented in what's going on plus there's something weird going on in the hospital as well uh as i said it is a mystery game i'm gonna have some trouble like showing you everything just basically because i want to protect some of the mystery i don't want to give when somebody buys this game they're going to want to be able to play it and play all of it and be surprised by everything it's kind of like you know knowing the twist of a movie before you see it you know like um you don't want to ruin that for somebody you know like spoilers if you will uh so let me uh, just, you know, go through the mechanisms of how Coma Ward is played, and I'm going to, you know, skirt around a lot of the real, real deep mystery stuff, uh, but you should have a really good idea of how the game is played, and then we'll come back here and I'll talk more about it. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to show you how to play Coma Ward, and as I said, I can't really go into a lot of the mysteries of the game. I, I want to, like, give you a good overview of how the game is played, however. Uh, each person is going to get a player pawn. You're going to start in the second floor lobby of the game. Um, each person will take a turn, and they'll do their actions. They'll move around the hospital. Uh, they will investigate rooms. They'll try to determine why they're actually here, and then the play will go on to the next person. You keep doing that until you have discovered enough clues that will cause the phenomenon of your situation to occur and then you will go through the end game process. All right, so uh, each player will get a player board that you see right here. Uh, I, I do like the fact that they have made it a point to make everything look cool. This looks like um, like the map of a hospital uh, that's on the side of the wall or like, you know, like it's just something that would be uh, like you'd have within the hospital, like in a pamphlet or something like that. I like the fact that they've made sure to put like little coffee stains and things on there as well to make it look real. The player boards are a little pill uh, tablet, things like that. Um, you get two sliders that uh, will tell you like how healthy you are, in which case it's like, uh, you know, you have one here, and so your, your health is five, and your strength and dexterity are four. As you lose health, it goes down. As you gain health, it goes up. Um, your focus and, and terror are on uh, starting the threes. Uh, as you gain focus, your ter as, as your terror uh, decreases, you gain focus. As your terror increases, you lose focus. Uh, the numbers basically tell you which, how many dice you're going to roll uh, and for tests. And I'll talk about tests here in just a little bit. Um, so, uh, like, basically, as you become more focused, like less scared you're able to focus more and so you have a higher focus level and the, and the reverse is true um if you were ever scared like you, you're supposed to increase your terror and your terror is already level five you'll actually lose health from that you're being scared to death at that point and this is a game where you can die you can get attacked uh and and, and be killed however the game is not over for you um when you die and i'm just going to touch on this really quick um you get an entity card um and basically what it is is that the back of the card tells you that you pick another player player that is has not been eliminated and you kind of are able to do different actions to help them and then if the two of you can win uh then you know you will you'll you'll like win the game like together as far as like as a team so if you get eliminated as far as your player don't worry about it you still get to play um each player will also get a neurosis a neurosis will give you uh, different abilities um so uh caring if you give another player an item minus one terror if your terror would drop below zero you may flip this card uh to the the p side and then so like if on the other side is like like these these better powers that you have um and you know so uh oops i just dropped that one obviously uh and they also have uh over on this side like uh controlling the first player uh time a player another player in your tile uh makes a check you may cause them to re-roll a single die 
an overbearing if you search a tile, uh, minus one terror, uh, an adrenaline, plus one strength, plus one dexterity. Now all these are different, and the backs are obviously different, and these are handed out randomly. It's just some way to like kind of give your character uh, like uh, something special to them, something that breaks the rules. Um, it should be noted that none of the characters that the players will be playing um, have a name, a gender, anything. Uh, you're, you, if you want to, you can come up with a little backstory for them, or not, it doesn't really matter. You can be just a total mystery, because obviously you have amnesia and you don't really know why you're here. Um, the game works pretty simply. On your turn, uh, you can do several different actions. Um, there's a lot of free actions you can do. You can move a number of tiles equal to your dexterity. Uh, you can trade items with a partner that's willing, like another player on the board. Um, you can activate uh, an Erosis ability that you have. Uh, you can use items or drop items. Um, you can also, if you if, once you move to a spot, you can uh, like check out what's there. So like if you go into one of these empty gray spots, you can draw a tile card that's going to tell you what is there um, and reveal it. Um, you do have to do a focus test when you do that to basically see if you have a hallucination. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but you do have to go through that process. You, If there is a reveal tile, you can rummage for items. Uh, all tiles in like areas, like, like the nurse's desks and things like that, uh, can only be rummaged uh, once. After you rummage them, you put a little tile on there, a little thing with an R on there to basically say that you've you rummaged in that spot. You can attack or steal for another player or an enemy if, if they're happening on the board. Uh, you can pick up a dropped item that's on this tile. Uh, and then after you're done with that, you resolve any end of turn effects you have, and then the player on your left goes. All right, so uh, just basically a couple of things how that works. Oh, I should mention one other thing. Um, each person will get... A, a quirk card. A quirk card um, is just something that is quirky about your and about and it's something you have to like kind of pay attention to what's going on. Um, you want to activate your quirk. Um, you're going to get five little player tokens, which are these five little purple pills for the purple player. However, like you know, the green player uh, has. Whoops! I just dropped it. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think they're going to be this tiny. This is my prototype, so just don't don't take these size. But like, they made sure like the green player has like a little green pill, you know. So I, and I like the fact that they're like once again that it helps with the immersion. So if you have a quirk, it's like whenever another player stands, you place a counter on this card. Um, whenever another player touches their hair, uh, place a counter on this card. Uh, there's one for like when somebody eats, you place a counter on that card. So it's just little quirky things that if you can add and, and you see the other people doing that, uh, then you can go ahead and add those tokens and you're going to get when the phenomenon appears, if you've, uh, if you've completed your quirk, you're going to get a little bonus ability. Um, you never reveal your quirk until the end game. So just keep that in mind. You can't tell anybody else what it is and, and it kind of breaks the, the spirit of the game, right? You're like, hey, touch your hair a couple more times so then I can add these tokens. And that doesn't work that way. But anyway, so on your turn, what you're going to be mostly doing is you're going to be wandering around this hospital and trying to discover what's going on. Um, you can move equal to your spaces that you have. So like with four dexterity, you can move four spaces. Um, when you enter into a room that hasn't been explored, you have to stop there. If you go to the stairs, each spot on the stairs is a space. So if you want to go down to the first floor, that'd be a space. If you want to go down to the basement, that'd be two spaces. Up to the third floor, that's one space. Pretty straightforward. You can choose to use the elevator, which will immediately take you to any floor on, on the on the um, on, on, on the hospital, but you have to roll a die, and if you roll a one, which I didn't, uh, it is stuck, and so you don't get to use the elevator. Uh, so when you go into a room, what you're going to do is you're going to reveal the room, and a lot of times there'll be rooms like this that'll just be empty and there's nothing on them. Sometimes they'll have some text on them. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But when you reveal a room, you have to make a focus check. And in this case, I have three focus and I need three successes. If you don't get three successes, uh, then you have a hallucination. Successes on our fives or sixes. And if you roll a four, that's called what's, what's called a suspense. So we're gonna roll here and see what I got. So I got a five and this will eventually, so I got two twos. So I would have failed and I'll draw a hallucination. Now, if I rolled a four with one of these dice, I get to pick up that four to re-roll then I also get to pick up another die and roll that as well, and then roll to see what I get. In this case, I got a two. And so, but now, if I had rolled like two fives, which have been two successes, and I rolled another four, I could pick that up 
and I can pick up another die, so now I have four total dice, and I roll them, and I would have succeeded and have no hallucination. That is the suspense roll. It's basically there, so like if you're down to one focus and you have to get three successes, and other things too will happen where you'll need a certain number of successes, but you don't even have the dice to succeed at it, it gives you a chance at pulling off pulling off the success, even with like, you know, <laughs> even, if, even if it's really rare, but you can still do it. So if you do have a hallucination, you draw a, a card and then you have like, and the person to your left will read it if it's one of these things. The person to your left draws the card and if it's a thing where you have to choose, where it says something darts around the corner, it says you can leave or turn on the light. And those are the two things. And then they would read what happens to you. I'm not gonna show you the card because I don't want you to know exactly what happens. Now a lot of you are gonna say, well, yeah, but after you play that again, um, anytime you're gonna know what to do when something darts around the corner. Well, uh, that's not the case because like they have multiple cards that say something darts around the corner. So the players won't have an idea as far as which card they've drawn. They just have to kind of react to what they think that they would do. Uh, so after you get done with the hallucination, if you have one, oh, and I should mention as well that um, there are cards in the hallucination deck that will tell you like this card. And what that does is it is not uh, like whatever room you have, it'll instruct you to draw one of these hallucination cards, which will give you a cool little backstory here through room, and then it will give you like a something. So the cavernous gateway, if you end your turn on this tile, draw an item card, move to an unrevealed tile and reveal it, you know, and then add to terror. And so like the hall of hands. And so these are like, obviously very, very scary, very weird, the blood fountain, things like that. Um, and then these would take the place of the, the tile that you just revealed. So if you are in a spot, uh, that you revealed and you can act you can do what's called a rummage and then you have to do another focus check And if you succeed at that, then you can draw an item and uh, the item cards um, Will be several different things and these are the items um, They could be like a bedpan which can, you could use as a weapon. Uh, it's a one-handed uh, strength weapon and plus two to attack checks and, and one damage um, They could be here like a, a vial of medicine uh, that you could take with has a random effect to it or it could be a clue like here this one's like a tape recorder uh like so uh and then you do with the if you, you reveal a tape recorder you then say like where that clue was you put that clue in that spot and since we did rummage in there as well we put the rummage token in there as well and then we go ahead and process that's the first clue once there are three clues revealed, at that point, you are going to open up your, you'll be instructed to open up your Phenomenon Packet, and you'll go into the end game. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the Phenomenon Packet, basically because I don't want to give away any secrets. But, so, here is, like, you're going to get a sheet of paper, and, like, depending upon which one you're instructed to draw from, uh, you're going to get a sheet of paper telling you the rules, and I suppose somebody could pause that and read that if they really wanted to, but don't do that. Don't, 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 don't ruin it for yourself. Um, that will tell you exactly what you're supposed to do. Um, in this case, this one, uh, each person is going to be handed a goal card, and um, that will be their goal as far as what they need to do to win. Those won't necessarily be the same as everyone else's. And then um, you'll go through the process. In this case, there are these cards, these like uh, these these darkness nightmare cards that people are drawing in this particular one. And um, eventually, what will happen is that somebody uh, will succeed in, in in satisfying their goal and their win. And then, um, depending upon uh, who who succeeded, you're going to have these different epilogues that you will read. They'll have a narrative end to the game. Um, so there is a lot of, like, I, I, I didn't really want to, like, read out one because I didn't want to ruin part of the game for you, but um, the, the one that I have, the phenomenon that I have, is, is very creepy, very weird, and, and is uh, very satisfying as far as when we played it and as far as the end goes. And we were able to play it a couple of times, two, three times, uh, actually three times, uh, now that I think of it, um, and each time it was different, right? Uh, the, because of the different things that happened. And I think that speaks well to the fact that, um, you know, we had a different play experience each time uh, that we had a session of this. Now, I just realized I didn't talk about combat. Combat's pretty straightforward. Um, if you are in the same spot as somebody, you can initiate a combat with them. You can attack to damage them if you, for a reason, like maybe there's a reason why, maybe that person's trying to kill you for who knows what reason, or maybe you, uh, have a reason, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that, uh, to attack them. Uh, 
you are going to, depending upon your weapon and how you're attacking, you're going to roll a number of dice equal to your strength plus whatever your weapon adds to it, and you're going to roll that many dice. The person that's being attacked has the option either to dodge or counterattack, depending upon how many dice, what they want to do. If they dodge, they roll two dice plus whatever uh, dexterity they have. And if you attack, you, and if they counterattack, it's just like they're making an attack. You compare the results. Fives and sixes are successes again. Uh, you compare the results. If like the attacker succeeds, uh, and they are going to either, if they attack to steal an item, they steal the item from the person. Uh, if they attack to damage, they'll do the damage to that person uh, as like the, the difference between the, the two results. If the defender dodged and they succeeded, nothing happens. If the defender uh, like counterattacked and succeeded, they can't like steal an item. Uh, they they because they were being attacked they can only do damage back so they'll do damage once again to do the difference between the two things uh, and you know that's how that works uh, you know it's just once again rolling dice and comparing results so uh, I really really enjoyed this one uh, I you know, I just I because I like a good mystery I like a good narrative immersion game and this one had that uh, incredibly incredibly well created incredibly well crafted and it just kept us on our toes the entire time we wanted to get to the end of the mystery uh, but let me talk more about that uh, in my final thoughts all right thanks very much for learning how to play Cobra Ward now um, there's gonna be comparisons to other games obviously a, a one that a lot of people are going to draw the comparison to would be uh, Betrayal of House in the Hill and if you watched my video of that a long long time ago I wasn't a big fan of that game mostly because I felt there was like this really weird disjointed two games um, you had like the first part which you know it's like why are these people even in this house stumbling around and then all of a sudden now you have your haunt you know and and I, I, I realized that the comparison is strong there between okay we have this first part of this game where you are uh, you know these patients in this hospital and then all of a sudden it kind of flips and now we have this phenomenon phase. But the thing is, is that the, the narrative, the story of the situation makes sense, right? And it makes, um, like, the, the, the immersion isn't broken. Yeah, the, the blur between the end game and, and the prior portion is, is, is fairly seamless. And it just makes, it, it just, it just makes narrative, like, it, it feels like you're telling a story. It feels like you're living that story, which is something that's important, in my opinion, uh, to the game. Now, um, you know, there is one thing that I think that uh, you, you need to make sure when you're playing this game. If you're going to be playing this game with, like, saying, okay, well, you know, obviously I'm going to do this because it's going to give me plus one die and I should do that for that reason. You know, that isn't, I think, the spirit of this game. I think you, and that, and you could play that game and probably have a lot of fun with it, regardless, because you'd win and you'd say, oh, or, or, or lose, and you'd have that that co-op or semi-co-op experience with the other players at the table and you'd have a good time. However, I think to really, really enjoy this one, I think you need to play it in a way uh, where you kind of have to put yourself in the, the, the character's places, right? And and put yourself into this world of, of the unknown and, and kind of stumble around and, and just have fun with the story. You know, do something that you think that your character would do. You know, let a role-playing aspect enter into the board game world. And I realize those things kind of you know, don't work really well because uh, board games tend to be very, um, like, you know, static and just like, okay, well, you know, the rules say do this, do this, do this. But this isn't that type of game. This is a game of exploration, it's a game of mystery, and it's a game of just kind of letting yourself just have a good time, win or lose. And I think that's the way you have to ask. And in my opinion, play the game like that, and you're going to have a heck of a lot more fun, ultimately. I mean, ultimately, it's just, it's, it's a great mystery game. I love games like this that, like, aren't just like, hey, go get the victory points and see how well you do. Uh, you know, and those games are great. But, um, you know, every once in a while, there's a game like this that just kind of shows up, and it really, really turns the game, turns the world on my ear, you know, as far as the board game world, because um, there's, there's this new world of, like, these mystery games, these, like, kind of semi-legacy games that are coming out, and I, and I really like that. I like the fact that people are actually putting a story into a game and then asking the players to experience it. 
And I'm really looking forward to seeing the final published uh, version of this because of the fact that I, I, I just want to see the whole thing. I want I want to have the whole story. And and there's games like this, a lot of games like this out there right now um, that uh, I'm really digging. And I'm really glad that we're going to have something like this show up. And I and I, I like it. It's a nice spooky theme. Um, it, it drew me in. It drew my the other players at the table in. And we just had an absolute blast. So uh, there you go. That is Coma Ward. If you have any questions about it, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I I can. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and until next time on the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.